Welcome back to the channel guys, Nick Armenis here from Armenis Digital. Just wanted to cover off Google Smart Shopping for you all. A lot of you have been asking me about Google Smart Shopping and it's been a long time coming, but I've pulled together a full course on Google Smart Shopping. So it's gonna include everything for beginners, basically. Uh, and it's gonna include what they are, uh, some in-depth info about what you need to know to get up and running, the requirements, uh, a testing strategy, um, some frequently asked questions for those of you already running them and how to solve issues. Uh, and then if you stay tuned right to the end, guys, I've got a case study coming out, but it's only gonna be available for those that stick through right to the end. I'll let you know how to get your hands on it. I'm also gonna be interviewing the person who I'm gonna be doing the case study on so they're a client of mine uh, and I actually work in the same co-working space as they do so guys stay tuned to the end I'm going to show you step by step how Google smart shopping campaigns work guys before we get into the video today please help me grow this channel so give me a like comment below if you have any questions so stay tuned to the end and, and give me some really good comments below so I can actually give you uh, some great answers tailored to you so hit subscribe hit that notification bell and help me out guys. For those of you that don't know, you're probably wondering what are smart shopping campaigns? How do they differ from normal campaigns? So guys, the main thing is Google smart campaigns automate a lot of the manual work that's required in uh, servicing and optimizing and running uh, normal shopping campaigns. So as you guys will already know, if you listen to this channel frequently, shopping campaigns are the images that pop up in a Google search and also in the shopping Google shopping tab. Okay, now these smart shopping campaigns, they still appear there, but they also appear obviously, they obviously appear on the search network, which we already know. They appear on the display network, on YouTube and in Gmail. Okay, so this is gonna take a lot of the manual work away uh, that you normally would do in setting it up and it's gonna put your campaign and your products on all of these parts of Google. Uh, it's gonna to optimize to, for maximum conversion value. So it's gonna take your conversion info and then optimize to maximize that. Uh, some of the things it automates, guys, are bidding, which is obviously a big one. So it's gonna adjust bidding up and down by product, uh, device, and all that, all in the background. And obviously, the longer you run it and the better data you put in, the better the output that's gonna come out. That's how machine learning works. The inputs and the outputs, the output is only gonna be as good as the inputs. So it also automates targeting, so audiences, devices, and stuff like that is all gonna be done in the background. Uh, there's no negative keywords, so it's already gonna start optimizing for, if that keyword isn't giving results, it's not maximizing conversion value, it should theoretically taper it back. Now I'm gonna get into this, that none of these things are perfect, but this is what it's been designed to do. Now placements, so obviously where the ads show up, uh, it decides all this and remarketing. So the great thing about these is you don't have to do separate remarketing. It's all covered off under smart shopping. Yeah, so a standard shopping campaign does not have remarketing and it does not appear on some of those other placements, especially things like Gmail. So how do they work, right? So smart shopping, we create ads using our Merchant Center feed. So just like a normal um, shopping campaign, if you need more info on the Merchant Center, just uh, I'll leave a link below or just search in my YouTube channel, Merchant Center, and I've got lots of videos to help you get that set up. So it uses your Merchant Center the and, and your feed, which links to your store and obviously has all your product data. Uh, it uses machine learning to merge the insights, which is the data from Google, and other retailers. This is a big part of this, right? So we're using other retailers' info selling on Google. Google has access to that, which with normal campaigns, that's not factored in as much, right? So it is to an extent, but if you aren't using the smart shopping campaigns, you're not fully utilizing that, right? So the AI looks at so many different things, guys. There's so many data points it looks at. It looks at seasonality, uh, uses search query intent. So Google's pretty smart and it knows the person's intent based on what they're searching. So it's gonna look at location, product, price, device, the category of products, what their history is. So if they're visiting a bunch of products in your space, Google knows they're in the market to buy, they're in a research phase. And so it's gonna adjust the bids up and down based on their browsing history. Obviously, the more data we can put into this, guys, the better it's gonna get. And the longer we let it run, the better for us. So it's all 100% automated based on the likelihood of the view converting. That, that, that is the main crux of it. I wouldn't overcomplicate it if I was you guys any more than that. So you, so you probably 
asking yourself as well, how do they differ from standard shopping campaigns? So I'm gonna give you a list of pros and cons. I'll briefly cover them off, but if you wanna pause the video, note them down. Um, I will also leave a link below to the slide. So if you want them, comment below and I'll send you the link, okay? So the pros, these, these ads are really quick and easy to set up, guys. So a beginner with minimal skill can set these up and run them and I'm gonna show you in the next few minutes how to actually set one up but you don't need much skill guys and, and that's what they're really good for covers your remarketing as well um, expands your reach obviously because you're hitting a bunch of other networks that the standard shopping campaigns do not there's minimal intervention needed on your end so if you're really a Google Ads novice these are really good it utilizes automated bidding strategies so you don't have to get into that complicated process because the machine learning takes care of all that overall Great for small businesses and beginners, guys. I think uh, if you're a beginner, don't have much skill, um, it's a really great place to start. But here are the cons. You've got very, very minimal control over your campaigns. And, and as a, a Google Ads expert, I like to have that control there so I can maximize performance for my clients very, very fast. Google Smart Shopping seems to take a lot longer and a lot more money spent to get the same results based on my experience most of the time. Now, in saying that, as I said, there's plenty of pros, but you know, again, you don't have device targeting. The negative keywords one is a really big one, guys. I can't actually stress that enough. Not being able to control the keywords also means that you know a lot of our segmentation that we could normally do, so in my course, I get into quite advanced tactics on segmentation, I'm currently pulling together a single product ad group video for course students. You know, we lose all that control. We've got an ad schedule. So if we know, you know, between the hours of eight and midnight, that's when we make our sales, let's switch it off for the rest of the period. We can't do that. Reporting isn't as good either. We don't have impression share metrics. We don't know which networks are converting. Um, and again, machine learning needs good inputs. And if you aren't good at feed management, or if you upload a clunky, uh, non-optimized feed, then the output, which is your sales, are only gonna be as good as what you put into it. And overall, guys, in my experience, standard campaigns, outperform smart for me 70% of the time, especially in shorter term timeframes. The longer we stretch out that time frame, the better I find that smart does. And to be honest, bigger catalogs, probably I would skew towards a smart campaign because the amount of manual intervention there that's needed to optimize is, is far too big. It's easier to let the algorithm do it although it can be very, very slow. So you start off slow, your return on ad spend is probably gonna be low, but as long as you keep optimizing, keep going slowly, which is what I'm gonna take you through in the case study and in the interview that I do with the owner of the business, you're gonna see that our scale has been very, very slow, progressive, uh, and the strategy I teach you is gonna show you how to do that as well. So just wait for that one, guys. When to use it, as I just said, if you've got a big, complex product catalog uh, with lots of different products, that's probably when I would do it. Uh, more than likely, and, and if you have lots of different, if you've got like a general store that tests tons and tons of different products, or you've got a client that has a huge product catalog, like the case study store that I'm gonna show you has, I'm pretty sure 25,000, 30,000 products at the moment. So very, very hard with a standard campaign to really get that going. But again, uh, you know, shopping is always gonna be tough with a big product catalog because we've got all that uh, optimization we need to do at the feed level as well. Uh, if you're time poor, probably skew towards smart campaigns. If you lack the skills to manually manage ads, so I've got a lot of content here in my YouTube channel and my free course and my paid course all over the place on how to optimize and how to run ads. If you don't wanna learn all that, smart shopping you know, is probably gonna cut your learning curve you know, down by two thirds. You're gonna probably need about one third of the knowledge. Next guys, I'd also say, if you've got a clean, well-optimized feed, skew towards there as well. Obviously that's gonna help your standard campaigns as well, but if you've got a clean, well-optimized feed, then it, you know, you're well on your way to having good info to give to Google. And so definitely a time to consider it. Uh, if, last one is you need to have plenty of conversion data and sales. So that's when I would use it. If someone's got tons of data, then you know the algorithm, Google's algorithm is gonna have plenty of info to work on as to what your ideal customer looks like, what are they searching, what search terms convert, when do they convert, what devices, and all those things. So 
That's the key factor in understanding this. It's you know data in and then uh, data collected is gonna help that algorithm decide when to show our ads. So guys, uh, you're probably now wondering what do I need to set up a campaign and how does it differ from a normal campaign? So guys, it is super important that you have proper conversion tracking installed. This seems to be something that a lot of people don't have and even quite large stores, I look at lots of different accounts and a lot of people do not have conversion tracking with values properly installed. I have got an old video on here on how to do that. I will do an updated one. The old video will still get you uh, set up for this, but there is a better way coming. I will film that for you. Uh, it's so important guys, because smart shopping campaigns optimize for conversion values. If you do not have proper conversion value tracking installed, it's not gonna be able to optimize for conversion value. It's gonna be incorrect. And so you're gonna make sure, run some tests, make sure that it's tracking properly uh, before you do this. You need remarketing audiences set up. So if you don't have remarketing audiences set up, obviously it's not gonna have proper audiences there to find. So make sure you set those up in analytics or Google ads. Uh, you're gonna have to still comply with Google shopping and personalized advertising policies. Just Google that phrase, it's gonna give you all the list of stuff you need to know. Skim through it, make sure the key points that you know, you're not selling dangerous goods, you're complying with all the things they want you on your page, refund policy, contact us, all those things. Make sure you run through, double check that you have all those. Uh, back to conversions, uh, you need to have a minimum of 20 conversions, I'm pretty sure now, but the more the better. It used to be 20, I'm not 100% now because every I went into my accounts and pretty much every account has had that, so I don't actually have that information. I'm pretty sure it's 20 guys, but to me, 50 to 100 plus, and to be honest, if you're getting you know, 50 to 100 plus per day, even better. So the more the better here. Uh, and again, you're gonna need all the normal shopping requirements, have a feed with approved products is the key one. So all that other stuff in all my previous videos is covered off. So have a skim through the channel. I'll leave some links below as well. So guys, I'm gonna now take you in and set up a campaign for you step-by-step. Step. It's not gonna take us too long. So if you wanna follow along, Make sure you bring up your Google Ad account, have everything ready. Um, as I said, have your feed approved and all that, have all the other uh, things ticked off that were on the prior slide, and we can get cracking and start a campaign. Okay, so we're in the Google Ads Manager dashboard. So this is the account I was telling you about, this is the person we're gonna interview, and this is the case study I'm gonna pull together based on this store, uh, find out more at the end. But yeah, as you can see, you know, we spent, I took over the account, January from memory, start of January. And obviously we have slowly progressively scaled it up. Now the actual conversion value is actually a fair bit higher because we're using a time decay uh, Google ads attribution model. So we're not attributing all the sales to this, but to be honest, the majority of the sales are being instigated by Google uh, and then potentially they're converting either organically or by uh, Facebook retargeting and things like that. So. Um, but still very, very good result. 10.7X return on ad spend for you know Google campaigns is pretty bloody good. 28.2K spent for 302K. But all that aside, guys, I'm gonna show you right now how to set one up. So either go to campaigns here or click new campaign. We wanna click sales. We want to go shopping. Then just select the country. This store is only based in Australia, so that's all we're gonna be doing and then click Smart Shopping here. This is gonna be grayed out if you can't do it, guys. So if you're just starting out, do a standard shopping campaign and use my shopping testing strategy I'll show you. If not, go to your Smart Shopping and then click Continue. Create a campaign name, Smart Shopping, all products, testing. And I'll actually walk you through uh, a bit about the actual testing process, but if you're brand new, don't worry too much about segmentation and just do an all products and let the AI find products that do well. And then you can move these either into a bestseller uh, or single campaign. I'm not a big fan of smart single campaigns. Um, one thing you need to note guys is that uh, if you have a smart campaign and a normal campaign running side by side with the same products, the smart campaign is gonna take priority. Set your budget, let's go with $50 a day. You can set whatever you like. If you set it too small, it's probably not gonna get you too much of a result very quickly. Around $50 a day is a good uh, starting point. Um, you can go as little as I would say, you know, $20 a day. I don't 
wouldn't suggest going too much lower than that, but at $20 a day, it's still gonna take a little bit of time. 50 is a good start, even 100 is even better. So just leave this, don't set a return on ad spend. I'll get to that a little bit later, but click save and continue. Now this is gonna show you kind of what your ads are gonna look like on the Google search, and you can scroll through these different networks here, and it's gonna show you what your ads are gonna look like. In here, if you want, you can actually filter by different things, you know, by all these different ways that you can filter products, uh, brands, etc. And you can filter and just do campaigns based on whatever it is you want to do. But for now, let's leave this there. If you wanna have a look and play around with it, do so. Make sure you got a logo in your Merchant Center, guys. And in here, you're gonna to wanna to create uh, either a banner or add some an image that represents your store because this is gonna dynamically uh, remarket to people. So have something good, something professional, pay someone to do it uh, if you want. And that way, you're gonna get a really, really good, you're gonna get a much better result if it looks professional. Now. I'm just gonna use one that we've used here before in the past, select that, click save. Uh, and then here, I'm just gonna do a short headline, you know, based on whatever it is you're selling. So automotive parts, Oz, something like that. Long headline, grab whatever you're using in your search ads and put that in there. So in this, we're just gonna put in something, you know, free shipping on all orders. Uh, description, you know, Australia's most trusted automotive parts wholesaler or something like that. Make sure you select the URL, add it there, add your URL and then just click save. And that's it guys, you've set up your ad. It's gonna take a little bit of time to start delivering uh, and showing impressions and getting clicks, so just be patient, especially if it's a new account. We'll jump back into the presentation and I'll take you through a bit more in depth of the strategy, but this is basically how you get a campaign up and running. As I said, I suggest you put all your products in there. If you wanna get more advanced, you can do so and just play around and test different campaigns. You've just seen that impressive Google Ads account. Uh, I recommend you watch till the end so I can show you how to get access to the case study on this store. I'm gonna also interview the owner. Uh, so we're gonna go through exactly, you know, how he approached everything, how he came up with the business idea, what he had to do to hustle to do it, because he has done a phenomenal job, guys. And it's very impressive and it shows you that, you know, people can drop ship and they can drop ship within their own country and still hit big, big numbers. One note is he's very passionate about what he does. So that's a key, key part to it. So I'm gonna take you into the strategy now that I would use, okay? So there's a very, very simple smart shopping testing strategy. Run all your products in a single campaign. If already running standard shopping, test one product group or a collection in smart on its own. This is a good way to warm up clients if you have them, to show them uh, that you can transition to a smart strategy and then your focus will be more on feed optimization rather than campaign. Make sure you pause all other shopping campaigns because otherwise you're gonna stuff up the process and the smart one is just gonna take over as well. Let it run for 15 days minimum, guys. So two weeks plus minimum before making any changes. I prefer even longer. I prefer 30 days before making any changes. That's me personally. Uh, slowly increase the budget, leaving it for seven days minimum after each change, okay? Now guys, if something is chewing up your spend before the 30 days, just remove it if everything's going to one product. But I find that Smart kind of spreads the budget, especially at the start, a little bit more than uh, say a normal standard campaign. Uh, and then yeah, as I said, any change you make here on in, just make some more changes and leave it for another seven days, especially things like budget changes. Uh, I keep increasing it around 10 to 20%, uh, no more than that most of the time, and then just very, very slowly. Depends also on the size of your niche, the country, and things like that. Next part of the strategy is keep increasing the budget and adding products if you want to take the approach of you're gonna put heaps of products in there. Smart is a very easy way to test a bunch of products. It's, you know, To actually do this with Facebook ads would be near on impossible. Uh, you're much, much better off trying this as a strategy. And the types of products, guys, I've got lots of product research videos, but if you, if you really think about it, if someone is searching for it on Google, you've got the potential to sell it. It's as simple as that. Mattresses, beds, filing cabinets, chairs, computer products, whatever it is, you can sell it on Google uh, and you can outperform 
uh, even people that are, you know, are far more established stores. Like we've come in with this store here and we've blasted people that have been in the industry for a long time. Uh, and even some of them, like the industry this guy was in, man, like there's lots of people that had the opportunity to go in there and dominate this and they didn't. And so we were able to hear credits to the owner, okay? So I came in and took this account over from a different agency, but they've done a phenomenal job, guys, and I hope you enjoy me taking you into this and giving you a bit of insight. So that's the strategy that I would use if I was you. So if you wanna optimize your campaigns to maximize your performance, these are what I would do and keep an eye on. So make sure you're looking in your merchant center for any issues. These do pop up all the time, especially if you're adding a lot of products in all the time. So make sure you go in there, fix them up. It's gonna improve your feed. Uh, it's gonna improve your ad performance. If you're not profitable or your goals aren't being met, guys, you can try setting a target ROAS. In saying that, if, if you do have already set the target ROAS, uh, if you want more conversions, like actual number, drop the ROAS percent. If you want to be more profitable, increase it. So it's not as perfect as it sounds, but it's just a way to give you a little bit of control. And this is obviously the downside to smart campaigns. Standard shopping optimization practices still apply. Titles, descriptions, images, price points, etc. The feed data quality is king here. We're using AI. Make sure you improve all those things. Watch my Google shopping optimization video. The link's gonna be below. Uh, if you increase the budget, make sure you're patient and leave it. Everything with Google is patient, guys. Please, please, please. I see it all the time in the group. There's so many people complaining uh, that this happened and this, and most of the time it's just because they weren't patient. Uh, if it fails to be profitable, your campaign, uh, slowly lower the budget. That's as, this is about the only control you've got with smart campaign. Remove products that are underperforming, okay? Just remove them. Don't listen to people saying, oh, just let it in there, it's gonna do its thing. No, nah, just remove it, don't listen to people. Unless, of course, it's your private brand, then fix up the reason that's not selling. Is it the product? Is it the design? Is it the product page? You need to look at all these things and improve them constantly. Uh, don't focus on your cost per click with Smart, especially, because it's gonna fluctuate. Because remember, we're optimizing for conversions, so watch your conversion value and your return on ad spend, okay? They're the metrics I'd really look at, number of conversions, conversion value, return on ad spend. Uh, consider campaign segmentation. If you wanna learn more about this, uh, my course link will be below. If you wanna learn more about Google, jump in, guys. Uh, FAQs, so can I run normal and smart campaigns together? Yeah, but the smart is gonna take priority and there's absolutely no point, okay? So just do one or the other, don't do both. Are smart campaigns better? I get asked this all the time. Um, as I said, I've been able to get a better return on ad spend and scale far more in most instances. I find they're quite hard to scale. They've got some benefits, they've got some downsides. Just review that slide where I went through the pros and cons. Smart shopping performance suddenly dropped. Again, as I said, you can either set a row as, you can remove products that aren't selling, uh, you can improve your store's on-site uh, conversion rate, um, you know, improving speed and things like that. Speed is a big factor with smart shopping campaigns. And yeah, other things you can do is slowly ratchet down the budget and, and, and things like that. Obviously the control is limited, but that's normally what happens. But remember, there's people behind a computer and a phone searching for things on Google. So don't freak out if the you know, performance drops temporarily, just wait, be patient. Smart campaign not spending, probably be patient would be the number one thing. If it doesn't work, duplicate the campaign, paste it again, start it again and see if that works. Otherwise you're gonna have to go through and see if there are any issues with your feed. Uh, what budget, I already covered this off guys, but I recommend you start on a minimum of $20, preferably 50 and ideally $100 a day if you wanna get, uh, especially in the US, if you wanna get any reasonable amount of information. Can I run single product smart shopping campaigns? Uh, I don't like them. I find the scalability very limited. Give them a try, see if they're for you. Okay guys, so the case study, this is gonna be available for people in the Google Ads playbook. This is still at 397 guys. Please jump in if you're interested, no pressure. Um, the interview is hopefully gonna be on YouTube, but the case study in this store will only be for the course members. The interview, I will either be doing a Facebook Live or YouTube Live, still need to organize it. It's gonna be in the Karma Collab co-working space that I work out of. So that's pretty exciting. We're gonna use the podcast room in there. I'll let you guys know when the interview is gonna be, hopefully within the next week or two. Just gotta obviously make sure that the business owner is ready as well, but should be really, really good guys. Um, make sure you jump in. And yeah, if you want the case study, jump on into the Google Ads playbook. Now guys, if you like the comment, as I said, please leave me a comment below with any questions. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And I hope your smart shopping campaigns do well and that this has helped you. So see you in the next video. Thanks very much from me and the team. See you guys.